We spent the past couple of years in a crazy hot market. Louisville home sales decline as demand outpaces supply. Effective communication is at the core of any situation. If you master these two ideas, you'll have a chance of being successful at residential real estate marketing. I think you need to be looking for investment opportunities that move the needle. The market will never crash if demand exceeds supply. This is what I've been telling you all along. This is the Jay Pitt Show. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitt Show here on Talk Radio 1080. I'm your host, Jay Pitts, here with Ryan Harris. Ryan, what's up? Oh, not much, man. <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, you know. Uh, I think we're going to do a little year end today. Yeah, kind of our, uh, I guess, the Spotify wrapped on the uh, United States for 2023. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. You know, all the major all the major podcasts do year in review at the end. So we do publish this radio show as a podcast. A lot of major radio shows actually uh, over the air do do yeah Spotify Wrapped or whatever. You what, speaking of Spotify Wrapped, what's your, what's your number one artist of the year? I, I don't even remember. I don't post those. I don't post them. But like, I was just curious if you knew. I will tell you who mine is. It's absolutely one hundred percent hands down without even looking. I can tell you the number one artist. What is it? It's Eminem. 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 Right, well, here, here's why. Here's why. Eminem, um, I have tried to go because I'm, I'm a big Jay-Z fan, right? Uh, I'm not a huge, like, current hip-hop guy. Uh, I mean, I can get behind, like, Jack Harlow, who's a hometown boy. And I have a current stuff. guy you like who's kind of new. Who, who's that? Big X the Plug. Big X the Plug. Okay. I need to – I, I don't even know, I don't even know who that is. leave here, listen to a couple, and you'd be like – I don't even know who that is, great. so we might have to check it out. Um, Eminem for me, it, it just has that big song catalog and like I, I work out every day. So, and it's kind of angry plug. Um, so anyway, there's that. I, uh, I listened, I have a whole Eminem mix. I tried to go Jay Z, but it's not angry enough. It's like, <laughs> it's like not angry enough for uh, like lifting heavy weights. You'll love big X the plug. Okay. All right I, all right. I know exactly what you mean. Is this somewhat intelligent? Because I kind of like that. It's very intelligent. Okay. Cause that's what yeah, I like. He's great. That's what I like about Jay-Z and Eminem, even though Eminem has a whole lot of other issues. Um, I do like the word smithing. Yeah. Do you ever so. listen to any other genre of music working out? Um, not really. Not really. No, I tried no to. I tried to go. I tried to go like hard rock, and I just yeah, I can't get. Yeah. It. I can't. Get, it's just hip hop only. Yeah, fair. Out. But there so you, you go. Probably re-listen to the same songs. I do. It's the same again. thing. It's the same playlist every single day. Well, maybe and I got you a few new songs in there. The, with, all right, I'll have to check it out. I'll have uh, to check it out. It's pretty solid. So, uh, you know, with running, because I do more running, I probably only listen to something fifty percent of the time when I'm running. I try to go silent a lot of the times get in my head think through things but other times but i could listen to any genre running it depends what mood i'm in and certain genres will get me to a runner's high which doesn't happen as often as people think but quicker and i'll just want to run with like my hands in the air oh yeah just middle of the night no- at 5 a.m pitch yeah. black going down frankfurt road <laughs> yeah well when i when i trained for the marathon all those years ago that i did it i had a regular course so you know I don't know how you did your how you do your training, but like I would do, you know, probably Monday, Tuesday shorts, short runs, like depending three and a half to six miles, and then I do half of my Saturday long run on Wednesday. So so when the mileage got up there, that could have been as much as eight to ten miles on a on a Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, I would do other short short runs, and then mm-hmm. Saturday long run take Sunday off. Um, and until you got really high miles and then you need to work out the lactic acid. So you do like a two mile jog walk like on Sunday and it was seven yeah. days a week, but like my, my, my Monday, Tuesday and, um, Thursday, Friday runs, I had a playlist that I would hit the same exact moment in the song at the same exact time on every run. And like when there's some, and there were some Hills involved yeah. and you like, you almost want a little, you know, a little pick me up. And so I could kind of engineer it to where the hype, the hype part of that one song that you want hit at the right time. So it's kind of like that runner's high you think. You're that about. clip on that phone over there is going to be pretty funny. That's all right. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to say something I completely forgot. Okay, yes. I want to talk through this with you before we get into kind of the year-end stuff. Okay. Uh, so I am running the Derby Marathon again. But I want to do a fundraiser for American Lung uh, okay. Cancer or just Lung can- Society, not cancer. Yeah. But um, and I'm thinking about doing this. So in my training block, 16 weeks, I'm doing 700 miles is what I'm supposed to be doing. And 
I want to, the way I want to do their fundraisers, get people to commit to either one cent, five cent, 10 cents per mile, 25 cents, 50 cents, or a dollar per mile. That's cool. And, but I don't know how I'm going to charge people to charge it up front. And if I hit all 700, don't give money back. If I only do 600, like let's say I get sick, like I want it to keep me committed first. Like right. that's part of it. Like, but you don't want to wait until the very end and see if like people don't right. pay. So I send out weekly emails. It could I think get that could be cool. Busy though, I think that could be cool. A yeah. weekly email, but like, just I think you got to leave the money to the end. People are going to give what they want to give. Yeah, maybe it's uh, you send a weekly email to everybody, and if they want to send it after that week, they can. If wait till the end, they can. What if What if you just did like half up front? Because there's no chance yeah. you don't you don't do three fifty. Yes, correct. So, and you, I mean, you, you're not. Idea. I mean, you're not running the race if you don't. Do I mean, I think it's a good idea. So, <laughs> or, or you may, maybe shouldn't. So, if they do one cent and you run seven hundred miles, that's seven dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you know, seven dollars, seven dollars. It's pretty so, interesting. Uh, that's kind of how I'm wanting to do it. We'll see. But I think you, I think what you'll see is the more effort you put into it, the more willing people are to donate. Well, yeah, you start telling people, I've done this much. You can commit now. There's only 500 miles left or something there you go. like that. There you go. So, All right, cool. Uh, put a little purpose behind behind the marathon. I, I like think it. it's good for things like that. But uh, all right, let's get to probably our only real estate topic of this show, um, the consumer real estate question. Jay, to you, what was the most surprising thing about the real estate market in 2023? Well, I mean, I was on record as expecting rates to taper by summer of 23, right? And they absolutely did not. I, you know, I could probably choose a lot of things. That could be it. I could say that, you know, we really didn't have a correction in prices. I, I kind of expected there would be a small correction in prices. It's kind of hard to come up with a single bigger, all the surprises were muted, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like maybe I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I, here's what I think it is. We saw rates jump and then settle, not not come down, settle, and then jump and then settle, and then jump again. So probably the the greatest um, surprise was the last jump from seven to eight, pretty much this fall, mm-hmm. uh, late fall that we saw. And I mean, you could probably add to that or make an addendum to that. The fact that the Fed is already signaling 275 points and ba- basis points of cuts. I think they're saying like six cuts next year. I mean, it's crazy how many it could be. Um, I do think that that probably doesn't commence until end of Q1. So that would put it in line with six cuts over three quarters, twice a quarter. It's about the same schedule that they raised rates on. I think you're looking at quarters and halves versus halves and three quarter you know, um, cuts like we saw increases. So, yeah, I mean, I would say that that last jump, I thought we, we had kind of tapered inflation and we didn't really expect rates to go, but they did. I really don't know what they think is going to happen though. Once they lower rates again, like I know what's going to happen. Everybody knows what we've talked about that. Like home prices are going to skyrocket. Uh, so incredible. I don't really know if they should. I, I don't either. Uh, I don't know what they should do. I don't think there's a right thing to do. Well, you know, we examined this yesterday in a, in a small group meeting. I mean, 5% was the increase in 21 and early 20, no, in 22, excuse me, in 22, early to 23. Uh, we had 4% over a period of 10 months, 4% increase to the federal funds rate over 10 months. I mean, it, it was, you know, half three quarter three quarter three quarter three quarter half right uh, and what do you think is going to happen and the only reason that that happens is we minted 80 percent of all dollars in circulation since 2020 so what do you do what know. do you do <laughs> you know what's the what's the culprit i mean it's these it's these big omnibus spending packages, right? I don't even think it was the PPP. That's what everybody wants to say was the problem. I mean, we stimulated business, but that was a fraction. Okay, it was the big omnibus spending like craziness uh, that started, you know, on the backside of twenty one when it was clear that that yeah, COVID was a thing and it was it was, you know, you know, a really really challenging issue. 
both for health and for the economy. But we didn't need to do all that, and we kept doing it. And it was, it was both Trump and then by, followed by Biden. It was both. It was both Congresses. It was both presidencies. It was both. Yeah. You know? Cracks me up when I see people online blaming inflation on e- – any single person or party no it's both it's yeah. absolutely and both this has been caused over years and decades of yeah. spending money and printing money i mean it was the black swan event that allowed them to do what they always wanted to do really fast they gave out two checks to everybody right uh two stimulus checks yeah but it was like 600 bucks a piece i mean it wasn't anything crazy it was 1200 wasn't it? i don't know i didn't get that i mean it wasn't everyone either you had to qualify but i mean yeah maybe it was 1200 i don't know because i didn't get it yeah I was, that was my next question i wasn't sure yeah. but uh all right, we're going to be back on the Jay Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. We'll be talking about the highest paid female athletes of 2023 and much more in just a few seconds. Welcome back to the Jay Pitt Show. I'm your co-host, Ryan Harris, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. Okay, so like we said, we're going to be talking about Kind of a Spotify wrapped here. This first one is highest paid female athletes of 2023. And I believe this is just what they make from playing their sport, not sponsorships. Or you could even go college athletes, NIL, uh, which I guess is technically all sponsorships. But uh, first, Jay, I want to know if you can guess any of the women on this list. Um, and it, even if, if you looked at it, don't tell me. Just go ahead and guess. <laughs> No, I, 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 I think I'm gonna have a hard time. Um, I know who it used to be. Yep. I don't know who Serena Williams is retired. I, Serena, now. Serena Williams is was the first name that came to mind. Yep. And honestly, I was thinking about guessing her because I bet she still makes more than most of the list in endorsements, despite being retired. I think you're, I think you're just probably disqualifying her because she's not an active. Yeah. Right. So actually, this isn't just salary. It's salary slash winnings and endorsements. Okay. But so names that come to mind, and no, I don't. Um, I uh, I would guess because of history um, and the sport, I would guess Coco. Yes, is on the list. Somewhere. She's number one on the list. Number one on the list. Twenty two point okay. seven million dollars. She won six point seven million and got sixteen million in endorsements. Okay. Interesting. I would guess um, – I'm just thinking of dominant or greatest of all time type, and I think Simone Biles is the only one. She is that nine is on the list. Okay. But it's very interesting. That's $0 salary winnings, but $8.5 million from endorsements. Endorsements. Well, she's technically still a an amateur athlete, um, but I figured that she would qualify. Now – my next thought, probably, and I don't know if they're they're qualified. Two for two, there you go. I don't know if they're qualified, but um, and I'm I'm blanking on the name. It'll come to me in a moment. Um, the the power forward center for you for LSU uh, NIL wise. I'm wondering if like because here's my thought from basketball perspective. I think I think oh, I think she I probably makes more than any WNBA yeah. player. Uh, she's not on the list, but, but what's her name? Uh, Asia. Um, is it Asia? Anyway, I don't know. Um, I, I, I could probably throw an Alex Morgan on there if I had to guess. Um, not a huge Megan Rapino fan, but she could be there too. It was, it was a world cup year. Um, so I would imagine their endorsements are kind of so off the charts. She's 12. Alex Morgan's 11. Alex Morgan is 11. Okay. So I got four on the list. Okay. Yeah, we're doing and top I, ten, but that's still pretty good. And I really can't come up with anybody. Else. So what's interesting in the top ten? Can you guess the? There are in the top ten. There are four sports involved in the top ten. So well, think, we've already about, said soccer. We've already said gymnastics. Well, soccer oh, top 10. 11, 12. I'm top ten. Okay, and there's nobody. There, there we'll will go be top nobody. twelve. So you got soccer. So soccer is in the top twelve. Yes. You got. So you said are these Coco. are these are these only U.S. athletes? Because I'm pretty sure I've only named no, U.S. Not. athletes. So it's international athletes too. Yes. So then soccer's definitely in the top ten. Nope. 
It's no. 11 and 12. So they are the highest paid soccer players in the world. Yep. Female soccer players. In the world. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so we said, we said. You got tennis, Coco Golf. There's, tennis. There's three others. Um, I can tell you. Golf. If you want. Golf. Who? Who? Nelly Corda. Nelly Corda. She's awesome. Okay. Um, she was 10 on the list. I've heard the name. Highest paid athletes. I've heard the name. Wim- women, women athletes. Yeah. Um, like beach, like beach volleyball. Nope. Um, so you said Simone Biles gymnastics, but I thought you said that wasn't top 10. It's nine. Oh, she's nine. Okay. So gymnastics, one more. So gymnastics, and golf, and you're never going to get the fifth one. It's okay. skiing. Really? Who? Number three on the list. Aline goo. <laughs> I don't know. 27,000 right. in salary at- winnings, but she has 20 million endorsements. Oh, wow. All right. I'm looking at this. So out of all the oh, people on this list, who, who I, is Iga? Iga beats me. Iga. Uh, I only like out of the top ten. What, she, what I does she knew do? Four people on the list. What does she do? I got to know. Tennis. Tennis. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the top ten were tennis players. See, tennis was the was a no doubt for me. I just don't follow women's tennis, so I don't know. Alex Morgan and and uh, the Megan Rapino were the only two soccer players in the top fifteen. Okay, I see Michaela Schifrin. I've heard of her. Um, I have not. <laughs> I mean, downhill skier. I mean, she's like a like an Olympic Olympic athlete. Uh, all right. So, so nineteen year old Coco Golf, twenty two point million, twenty two point seven million in earnings. Currently ranked the number one player in the world as recently as September. Man. Yep. I mean, I knew she was good. I didn't know she was number one in the world. I should mm-hmm. probably follow follow a little more. All right, let's do uh, let's do the males now. And okay, highest pay, highest paid athlete, men, men's athletes. Yeah, and every article I found was like in March or like June, July was the most okay. recent thing I found. But they were all, all were the same. So okay, number LeBron, one, LeBron James. No, he's four. Okay. 120 119.5 million. Okay. Uh Shohei Otani. Not on here. He just signed a new contract. I guess he probably He's probably on it now. Okay. Um top 3 are soccer players. Ronaldo, Messi, Mbappe. Okay. Ronaldo made 136 million, Messi made 130 million, Mbappe made 120 million. Christian, Cristiano so Ronaldo's endorsements was 90 million. Wow. He's getting sued right now for a billion dollars, though. <laughs> Why? Uh, promoting Binance as much as he did, and he came out with a NFT Ronaldo thing that he really tried to push, and now he's getting tr- getting sued for a billion dollars. Wow. Okay. So. Well, Me- Messi just got just got s- stupid money after mm-hmm. well, you know, the move to Miami. Or such whatever. a growth thing with owning. Yeah. He's going to be able to own a team. Sure, and, sure. Yeah, pretty awesome. Okay, so LeBron James is four. Okay, do we count Tiger? Is Tiger on this because of no? There are two golfers, and they're both live. They're both live. So I so we're uh, DJ, Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, and Phil Mickelson. One hundred and two million. Dustin Johnson. Okay, or that was a salary. Are we he, talking? Are we talking top ten? Top ten. Here. We're still in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Two golfers in the top ten. Um. So There's three basketball players. You already named one. LeBron James. Yeah. Uh, who just got paid? Um, I mean, is it is Steph Curry? You got to think endorsements too. Yeah, Steph Curry is number eight. Look at you. Okay. There's one more. I think it's going to be a tough one to get, but you um, might be able to. He's number ten on the list. There's so many names running through my mind. Um, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. I was going to go. I was going to go Harden. Uh, and then there's one tennis player and one boxer. One boxer is it, and it's not Floyd Mayweather. He made a hundred million in salary, so no, it's and enough. ten million in endorsements. Um, it, is it? Uh, the He's big, from Mexico. I don't know. Canelo Alvarez. Okay, that's that's and a good then, one. Uh, the tennis player is from Switzerland. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. Switzerland. Roger Federer. Well, Federer. Okay, all right. I didn't. I guess I didn't process that he was from Switzerland. Uh. All right, it's a lot of money, but he's not. But he's not the best player in tennis anymore. He's just—it's all—it's got to be less money. It's got to be endorsements. Though. Yeah, 
Yeah, you okay. know, best player. I didn't click the link specifically. I was just thinking, look. best player is kind of you know opinionated. Most money is. It's very very quantitative. Yeah, it's very very objective. Uh, so Roger Federer. Um, so we're we're pulling from Wikipedia. Here. That one was Wikipedia. Yeah, the source ain't to tell you to never use in school, <laughs> but always has the best. It info. Always has the good information. It really does. Have so, you ever played that game in uh, school growing up where it was? I forget what the game's called, but you start with two different topics on Wikipedia. So say like uh, we start with phone, but you have to get to chicken tenders by just clicking links. And whoever gets there the fastest wins. So you I've click never, phone and then you click something that you think could get you to chicken tenders next. I've never played that. It's it, like the six degrees of chicken tenders fun. is what it sounds like. It's pretty that's, fun. That's funny. It's a good list, man. I, I, you know, I feel like I did pretty good there. Yeah. I didn't uh, get Phil. I did get Steph. Okay. LeBron. Yeah. I think we got stuff. a couple of minutes left. I started this a minute late. So yeah. That's all. Uh, it's all good. It's a trend of, of all today. Right. That's the trend uh, for the day. Let's jump into uh well, let's just talk about this. Then we can talk about this in a couple of minutes because this is kind of twenty twenty three. Taylor Swift, Times Person of the Year. It's been posted of everywhere. Course. And uh, a lot of funny just things, people talking about it. Uh, man, she's a great businesswoman. I mean, hey, it's 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 crossing into cult status. I mean, like, you know, good for her. Yeah, good for her. Who's cult status for men? Like, who men? I, like, Tiger Woods. Yeah, probably. But I don't know. It's done a lot. I mean, he's done not the best things for people to still absolutely love him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of like sure. crazy when you think about it. But Dude, just, just I'm a tiger you, lover. You just see him out there on the course with his kid, and you're like, you love this guy. Yeah, like he's amazing, and and like he 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 blows ratings away. Like when he's in in a tournament, like people are just watching. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I don't know that there is another. I mean, around the world, you can probably talk about some of those soccer stars. I don't think Mbappe is quite quite there. Maybe. That's maybe messy. True. I guess I'm talking more America, but yeah, maybe, I maybe mean, all those soccer players have could start a cult. Yeah, with with their fans, it, it is pretty crazy. Conor McGregor's kind of similar. I saw him on the list. He was number one, like in twenty one, in terms of earnings. Yeah, um, which is interesting. He could probably come out and decide he wants to fight. Is, yeah. Doesn't he? Isn't he fighting? Soon? I, don't, I you got me. I don't know. Like the guy has never been the same since yeah. i mean oh, he's cte's kicking in yeah that's exactly right <laughs> so no interesting interesting stuff okay so taylor swift person of the year yeah. all right but uh all right we'll be back we got a lot more lists this is the j pitt show talk radio 1080 real news real talk we'll see you in a couple 120 seconds <laughs> and we're back folks welcome back to the j pitt show here on Talk Radio 1080. All right, so doing our year-end review, um, talking lists. So, um, you know, we talked about top earning athletes, both male and female. And now I think we're going to talk a little more financial sector. Yeah. Ryan's got... And random things. Yeah, random so. stuff. That's okay. <laughs> Best performing stocks. Yeah. Okay. So I am shocked. Uh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Ryan warned me uh, as I look at this, uh, what are the best performing stocks that there's a hilarious meme in there? Um, but shocked, absolutely shocked. Abercrombie coming in at number three, up 228%. Abercrombie. How, what does that? I tell you what, this is going to be a case study for so many companies going forward. What they've been able to do... Over the, and I'm, I think we've even talked about this on the show over the last year and a half, two years has been incredible. They've completely changed their brand. They've gone away from the moose on your clothing that at least when I was in high school or middle school, every kid would want like that was the status symbol. And then it got to be like ugh, Abercrombie. And now they've yeah. completely transformed themselves uh in front of everybody and they are the third best performing stock of the year so far right now so they're up 228 percent this year i i find it only incredible. beaten by coinbase which, which is number two 325 percent and riot platforms which is 357 percent and a lot of you are probably wondering what is riot platforms 
right? Platforms is a Bitcoin mining and digital infrastructure company focused on a vertically integrated strategy. The company has Bitcoin mining data center operations in Central Texas and Bitcoin mining operations. Uh, yeah, I guess well, in Colorado. Well, and and we should we should also say the balance of the list right behind Abercrombie at two hundred eighteen percent is Nvidia, essentially state sponsored at this point, yeah. right? With the chips bill, um, two hundred eighteen percent. And frankly, it's it's somewhat warranted. You know, I don't don't know that how many of you that listen follow like you know, geopolitical kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, there are real concerns that China will invade Taiwan at some point and like nine, something like 98% of the world's chips that go in every device you use in today's world are manufactured in Taiwan. So, you know, having some issues there, we, we need to insource, if you will, the production of some of these chips, these Absolutely. high-speed chips to an American company. Okay, beyond that, it's pretty much companies that you would – probably expect to see meta is 153 percent they got crushed when the when the when the market slowed down and then came back royal caribbean still rebounding from covid you know halting their business and then of course tesla at 119 percent. yeah it's it's funny it's like uh you really don't expect meta or tesla after how much they've grown to go up over 100 percent in a year but it's because they went so low because they went so low yeah Uh, or even royal caribbean like super weird for them to be up over I mean I think but. I think it's just because their business was nearly decimated by COVID because people couldn't travel. Well, and, and I don't even remember the beginning of COVID, like the the ship got sidelined and quarantined. Like people were like not allowed to yeah. off board because they had a COVID outbreak on a ship. And I think that really hurt. You know, a lot of vacation did okay. Um, you know, Airbnb you know properties, for example, people would go and like with your like pod, if you will, and vacation during COVID, that was a nice thing to do, but you're not going to get on a boat with a bunch of strangers. Yeah, the Royal, here in the Royal Caribbean made me think of uh, back to when the cargo ship got stuck sideways. <laughs> like, that that seems forever ago. Yeah, yeah. And it probably was, I don't know, how, how long ago was that? Oh, dude, I can't even tell you. Here's something. I was, how long ago do you think the college football playoffs went to four teams? Um, what year do you think it was? Well, I told somebody, somebody thought it wasn't that long ago. I said, I bet it's longer than you think. 2017? 14. Wow. First year. Okay. Interesting. And I forgot about the, well, I remember back to college football again, when Ohio State played Alabama and Ohio State was only seven and zero because their year started late because of COVID. Oh, I forgot about that. (laughs) Well, it was, I remembered it was certainly like Lamar Jackson was was that was a final four year um for us but you know we had a rough rough few years before and after that so yeah i mean i haven't paid quite as much attention um but back in back in with the vengeance now yeah all right let's do uh top grossing movies of 2023 (sighs) number one barbie and it didn't get that long of a i mean it came out in july so you think maybe some that come out in january february might have more of a runway but uh no uh, 2023 grows 636 million and over 60 million tickets. Yeah, sold. I was going to guess number two. Super Mario Brothers uh, being a, you know. A I just saw that hit Netflix. Kid, kid from, yeah. Like, Have I was seen it, I, I guess. I was surprised. We've seen it, yeah. I Is mean, it kids. Good for a, like, oh, it's great for a kid yeah. movie. Um, but, like, do you enjoy it at all? I, I enjoy There's certain movies that I watch with my kids that I just can't bear. I stare yeah. at my phone the whole time <laughs> and I try not to fall asleep. But, like, yeah, absolutely enjoyed that one as far as. Um, you know, keeping my attention for a kid movie for sure. Yeah, uh, Spider Man across the Spider Verse. I yeah. thought that was great. That was yeah, one of those I good. watched. I was like, this is awesome. Also good. Uh, also number good. four, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I actually don't think I've watched. I haven't seen it. Um, I and haven't seen it. I can tell I you, Disney movies. Did Disney's whiffed on their last few. I mean, yeah, so I've it was seeing that. Yeah, it, it's pretty nice that they they got a little something going there. Oppenheimer, I heard about. Obviously, was good. <laughs> Uh, Little no, Mermaid. Sorry. Little Mermaid was actually at number six, a, a drastic disappointment. Yeah, um, haven't seen it. Avatar: The Way of Water. I, I tried to watch, couldn't get. Haven't seen it. it. <laughs> um, did not watch Ant uh, Ant Man. I have that not. Was eight. I've seen that one. I've only seen the first two John Wick, so I didn't watch the chapter four yet. Sound of Freedom was crazy. That was one of those like counterculture, like you know, supposedly right wing conspiracy kind of 
uh, films to see that rounding out the top ten with 185 million. I like, haven't seen it. Seems seems kind of <laughs> crazy to me. I, I've not seen it. Yeah. Um. I've I've certainly not seen it, but like it was. I'm watch more. I mean, TV look, shows. it's Angel Studios. I mean, who's heard of Angel Studios? Like, the, look look above it. It's <laughs> Warner, Universal, Sony, Walt Disney, Universal Disney, 20th Century. Walt Disney, Lionsgate, and Angel Studios. Taylor Swift with the number 11 movie on the year. It's Isn't incredible. that crazy? Incred- uh, ahead of Indiana Jones, Mission Impossible, Transformers, Creed 3. It, it's pretty insane. Creed yeah. 3 was good. Creed 3 was good. I didn't, I, you know, those movies, I, I can't I can't hate on them. Yeah, that was good. Uh, okay. The, the Hunger Games, I've heard great things about the H- Hunger Games prequel. Look, I mean, if you Is look that- at it, it just came out. It's, it, oh, I didn't even know it came out. Yet. Yeah, it just came out, it's and it's no, it came out November seventeenth, and it's already at number twenty with one hundred and twenty three million. So you allow that to roll? I guess that's only in theaters. Right the, now. It's only in theaters right now. You allow that to roll through the end of the year? I bet it climbs. So here's something: once it's out, I heard of it was phenomenal. Theaters, too, by the way. Do they count like people buying it online? Or I think that there's uh, so um, there is a premium digital release. I think is essentially like it's not regular streaming platforms, but it's like you know Amazon, it's it's Apple Mu or Apple whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a few sites that you can get like movie theater quality like time release times, and so yeah. I don't know. I think that goes to the gross. Okay, but it doesn't like like Mario Brothers on Netflix. Like they don't count a gross for that. They should. <laughs> they probably should. It's probably going nuts right now. I saw it was number one. It was number yeah. one on Netflix yesterday. Uh, okay, let's move on. We'll do top ten musicians globally. You can guess who number one is. Oh, Taylor Swift, of course. Yes. Yeah. A lot of mentions of Taylor Swift on this, and it just shows she's always been a star, but it seems like the last it's separated herself 12, 18 months, it's taken it to a new level. Got to think it's because well, Travis Tour. Kelsey. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Eras Tour for sure. I, I still see those videos going around of like, hey, you know this guy that nobody knew about? Now he dates Taylor Swift. And then I've seen the reverse also. I, I've looked at this already, by the way. So, it, you know, the guessing is yeah. not something we could do at this point. Two Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny surprises me. I barely know who that is. I couldn't is. tell you one Bad Bunny. I'm, so. I'm old. So <laughs> The weekend. I know The weekend gets crazy streams. Like, has probably like the most streamed song of all time or at least close to it drake does not surprise me i think um, i'm old now i don't know a few of these people i don't here. know some of these people i don't even know how to pronounce number five you yeah wanna, you want to give it a go i'm not and i'm not gonna uh, go on number six either i'll, I'll say it I'll, I'll be the one to bite the bullet peso pluma <laughs> <laughs> i think i think the question mark and on the end of there six is, really is uh feed fine f-e-i-d somebody Hannah, do you know these people you don't know them? Okay. Right. That makes me feel uh, a little seven, bit. Seven, Travis Scott. Eight, Za. Nine, right. Carol G. Don't Lana know. Del Rey. That's that's a wild one to me. Yeah, that is. Lana Del Rey is, is not top ten material in my and opinion. Then, uh, then we got another minute here. So yeah. well, let's move on to the top ten songs. Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Not I'm not surprised by that. I'm not. I am surprised not to see. Haven't, haven't heard have Flowers. A haven't heard Kill Bill. Which yeah. was number two. I'm Three as it was by Harry Styles. I think I do know that one. Peso Four, Pluma. seven by Jungkook. I mean, like Taylor Swift coming in at number six at her top surprises me. Such a disappointment. But she also has two. Antihero is also in the top ten. So that, that you know, I mean, it makes a little bit more sense that Peso Pluma is not, you know, that we don't know who it is. It looks like a you know yeah spanish but, uh, speaking artists so uh we're gonna uh, cut to a couple ad sponsors again and we'll be back with our last One segment, more segment on the j pitch show talk radio 1080 real news real talk welcome back to the j pitch show talk radio 1080 real news real talk i'm your co-host ryan harris all right on to our last segment and we're going to talk. I had a question for you, Jay. Yeah. Uh, what's been your favorite convo or topic we've talked about our first year doing the show? We haven't officially been doing it a full year. I think we started in like March or April. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe May. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't think it was May. I think I think it was earlier than that. 
February. I was going to say February, February, but he he made me doubt myself. Okay, so great question. Um, Favorite part. Favorite conversation is probably our most viral clip. Uh, that's what mine was going to be. So. Yeah, Fa- <laughs> yeah. Fatherly advice, like that. That was a good one. Um, well, I'll tell you. Well, it's one I've thought about a lot. I'll tell you why I've enjoyed the parenting topics or conversations, and we've had more than just that one. Right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I think when you're going to be a new parent, you're looking for well, if you're if you're willing to take advice, you're looking for all the advice you can get. I think for some sure. people probably think they'll be fine going into it or they don't need any help i think you know knowing what i know now i'm glad it wasn't that way Mm -hmm. i think you should ask for as much advice as you want now people giving you advice without asking for it is kind of annoying right there's a lot uh, ask ask parents you respect or business people or entrepreneurs or people that uh almost model the life like you'd like to have your life sort of look like at some point uh that would be my advice to people that are going to be new parents now uh ask people ask people you respect and actually listen and uh, soak it in and pick the pieces you want to apply to uh your life once you have your first child yeah no i absolutely agree i i um i knew i wanted kids before we had them right i knew i wanted i knew i wanted them like when i decided it was pretty young right and my wife wasn't quite ready and it was like okay we'll get there and then all of a sudden it was on us right and it was like okay i i don't know i feel like she was more prepared than i was and i was the one who was more certain i think you would agree with me you'll never be fully prepared (laughs) no you will never be fully prepared that is a hundred percent truth um You'll never be prepared once you have kids. Like once you start, I mean, I've got three and I'm not prepared for the daily. You know, my son broke a finger the other day in the middle of basketball Did practice. I know that. And uh, actually went to the doctor with him this morning, which we got we got great news. It's four to six weeks, but it's like. First broken finger. First broken finger. Fir- first broken bone. First broken bone. It's kind of cool when you break your first bone. I know, but it's in the middle of basketball season and he's like bummed. And it he does can't, stink. But. And he's a six, you know, fifth grade boy. And, and he, he stitches yet? And yeah, they've all had pretty yeah, much all Stitches are kind of cool the first yeah. time then. Well, my unless you're my four-year-old and you get one right under your eye. So they're like you get to see it for the rest of your life. But I mean, I told him chicks dig scars. So. <laughs> I'm pointing at my nose right now to Jay. I uh, cracked just, my nose wide open one day, and not from sports, from yeah. probably the dumbest thing anybody could never think of. Which <laughs> I'll I'll tell the story real quick. Why not? Why not? Um, and I'll I'll make it short. Uh, going fishing with my dad. I was maybe like seven or eight. Not very old. Maybe nine, but not very old. Back in the boat trailer up Freeman Lake in E Town. Tells me to go stand on the boat trailer while he's backing it up because it's kind of weird. You can't couldn't see where he was going, so I'm standing up there holding on to these two things that fold up, and uh, he thinks this is a bad idea. And when he thinks it, he stops, and I slam forward and basically just do a belly flop onto a metal bar Ugh. in my nose. And uh, the plastic surgeon in E Town wasn't in for the day golfing. He was golfing. Go to Louisville. <laughs> that plastic surgeon wasn't in town, so some new somebody in residency i guess stitch my nose up and i have this big old scar from my whole life on my nose but now it's part of me i don't know it's character man that's character a lot of people will have known me for like three years and then they'll randomly say did you hurt your nose recently no it's been there the last three years the whole time been there the whole time and that shows you people don't pay that much attention no they no they don't no they don't but no i i um you know i'm not prepared i you know the 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 frustration that he felt from his injury and he, you know, he acted out, got a little, got in a little trouble at school the first day he went back and like, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared yeah. for that. Like, like him feeling like he can't, he's limited and can't do which the thing. finger it was his, it was his ring finger on his left hand. So about the best thing, one that it could have been still play just tape. Double well, tape. yeah, they're not allowed. Well, he couldn't, I tried to keep him in the game. This is me as a dad. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks to my upbringing, you know, um, you know, 1980s. That was another thing. Old. Nothing cooler than double tape and double two fingers well, that, together that's, and that's basically what they did but they said no nothing for four to six weeks i mean it was like literally double and it's black and now blue. if it was high school basketball region tournament oh, he, playing. Did, he he would have stayed in there if yeah. it wasn't 11 like he yeah. probably would have stayed in there but the truth is he could not make a fist yeah. and so i just wasn't ready for the for the hurt 
that he was going to feel like being limited. Like he's mm-hmm. never been limited. Like life has never taught him that lesson. And he went and he acted out a little bit at school and got in trouble. But he's a great kid. And like I'm just saying, you're never ready. Yeah. You're never ready for what's coming next as a parent. You're never ready to be a parent. Like if you know you want kids, you might as well just do it because you're going to learn on the fly. And yes, ask for advice like you said. But um, man, it is – you never know what's going to be impactful. You never know what's going to seem cringy. You're going to think things are cringy, and then they'll turn out to be true, and you'll feel bad that you ever doubted the person that gave you the advice. Anyway, that's just – I try to be very, very general when I give advice to somebody, and I got I always try to make sure that they ask. I don't offer. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we have another – parenting clip go viral this just might be a parenting radio show <laughs> <laughs> you know it is what it is man but, you, I, th- uh, I feel like i feel like you don't hear from a lot of dads when it comes to stuff like that. you don't that's uh, that maybe that's what it was i think it's different so yeah uh, maybe maybe we do some more or um yeah we'll see how it goes and that's yeah. great lead into the next question yeah. do you have any goals for this show in 2024 you know i think just keep it going man i mean i like what we do I, for me the, the any media type endeavor I've ever done has always just had to feel good, mm-hmm. right? Like, like I've tried to plan and be very rigid and that just doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I like the fact that we talk some real estate, but not all real estate. I like that we talk current events. I like that we talk business entrepreneurship. I like that we talk like pop culture and things like that. I think just, I think stick with it, keep it fresh, yeah. keep it fresh because like, you know, you came to me with the draft idea and I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's, it's something that you get to get, more of our personality and not Absolutely. just I, one thing I never ever would do is that boring real estate show that like <laughs> talked about pre-approval letters yeah. and like, you know, you know, f- curb appeal and like freshening your home for the fall listing. Like I, I ain't doing that and yeah. not doing it. Uh, you know, I think if you're asking me for this show 2024, I think we should more guests. I uh, agree with that. Try to figure that out. Maybe live call-ins i don't know how possible or i think just take maybe more risks with guests mm-hmm. or call-ins or questions i think would be guest, fun. guest is a good idea we, uh, we should do more guests we should, probably should have a meeting and just sit down and see what we want to do the next year this for is it. true we um, should probably do that i think you know we'll uh, talk about a separate like instagram or social media for it to post it's probably 20 good idea, clips a week it's a good idea uh it could be interesting especially if we do more louisville stuff yeah, i think I uh be interesting to to talk Hannah about. did not scoff when you said that. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> twenty. I don't know about twenty, right? Well, yeah, it's, that's an arbitrary it's, number. It's an arbitrary. It's number. a lot of clips right there. How about how about five? Uh, how about five. Five. There you go. We can do five. Um, but okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that'd be fun for twenty twenty four on the show. Okay. So, uh, all right. Last thing. Goals for yourself. I'm I want not, you to go first. Yeah, I'm not done with mine yet. Um, still working on kind of the business side. Mm -hmm. family side of goals but uh i do know my running goals for 2024 uh 1500 miles okay i'm gonna hit probably we just like i'll probably hit 1100 ish this year so i think 1500 is doable that's pretty it's pretty Um, it's pretty serious i mean we, we, we talked about your 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 training so 700 for prior to derby that's pretty exciting yeah, yeah. So, so that'll get you a big chunk. Get me there. And then two marathons in 2024. Okay. So the Derby one, and then maybe do another one in uh, November-ish. Where? December. Don't know yet. Okay. I need to get that they do the out. Herb, with the Urban Bourbon here in the That's fall. half. Oh, it's a half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I've ran that the last two years. Now gotcha. that I'm thinking about it, if I'm doing two marathons, two 700-mile training blocks, the second one will probably be more. 1,500 is a little, a little less. Let's go... Let's go 1,800 miles, That's actually. A lot. Let's do 1,800 miles. That's a lot. It's about five and a half. Uh, yeah, see how many miles a day that is for me. Well, I mean, I, you're not going to run seven days a week, are you? I do uh, six days. Is six? Okay. The goal. So 1,800. Um, Just do divide about 365. That's fine. That's four four point nine three per day. Nice. Um. Which, you know, obviously you're going to have some days off. So so it's pushes north of that. Yep. All Exciting. right. We've got 50 seconds. So let's hear a couple of years. I'm sure yours aren't completely done for 20. Well, no, they're yeah. not. Um, I will say I want to – I want to – push golf goals? I, yeah, I'm going to push the handicap. I want the handicap to go down to below 18. Nice. I want to get below 90. 
Oh, um, you'll definitely do that. And I think I can do that. Um, I, I, but more than that seems arbitrary. So let's just do that. Um, I want to be more present in my kids' goals. So I always do a goal setting with them every year. Mm -hmm. Okay. But by three months in, we've stopped reviewing it. Um, you know, a lot of them are sports goals, school goals, things like that. But like providing them some more accountability really is where I want to go with that. And, you know, I, I have goals probably for, uh, you know, our golf scramble, like, you know, push that, do more, do better. Um, I don't really have business goals. That's going to sound really funny these days. Um, you know, I, I kind of know where we want to go. I have intentions. Well, I'm sure, you know, we're out of time, but, you know, probably in the new year, we'll talk about your team's goals. We'll talk about team's goals. We do projections and things like that. But, like, they're a bit bit aspirational when it comes to business goals for me. I, like, I really like more intentional stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that. But, no, that's all the time we got for you this week, folks. Uh, and pretty much that's all the time we got for you this year. Yeah. So, year in review. That's a wrap. Um, we appreciate everything all your patronage this year you tuning in and listening to us you know gab but uh we hope you have a great new year i'm going to see matt rife with the wife so uh we'll see you on the other side back in 2024 for another episode of the j pitts show here on talk radio 1080 for ryan harris i'm your host j pitts we'll see you soon peace